So this is my first impressions of Wonderland's War. I was able to play a partial game of this at PAX South with their prototype copy. I think it's going to Kickstarter here in the next maybe month or so. Um, it could be delayed. I mean, Kickstarter's uh, uh, dates change. But I want to talk about the game. Before I talk about the game, though, uh, I want to talk about I can't remember his name, but this is the uh, uh, person that demoed the game to us. He did an amazing job. Uh, uh, Skybound uh, Druid Sea Game should be really happy that he is working their booth because uh, I don't know his attitude and his ability to explain the game was was really good. So uh, I just wish I could remember his name. It's it's it. Uh, uh, I'm not great with names, so um, but thank you for demoing it. And uh, he, he just has an amazing attitude about about uh, everything. So uh, this is some of their artwork. I believe it's done by the same guy that did Dice Throne. So they hired an artist that does really well with this. Uh, I'm going to show some miniatures. I'm going to talk a little bit about the gameplay. I wish I had gotten more pictures of the boards because I thought they were on Board Game Geek, but... Uh, uh the pictures actually didn't turn out great I don't, i'm not entirely sure why but something with the lighting in this area so these are some of the minis uh, i think these are prototype minis but they still look really good they're grim forest-esque so the style of them is kind of like grim forest i think and uh but they looked really good i thought they looked good at least here's some more again the pictures don't do them justice they they did look really good um so here's maybe a better picture and I'll come back to this and talk about the game, uh, the player boards, another mini. So just some more minis here. Okay. So this is a, actually an early prototype board. The new board is one main board. I should have gotten a picture of it, but everything works the same way. So the, uh, there's a couple, there's basically two phases. Yeah, basically two phases in the game. There's a drafting phase, which is goes around the tea party. And then there's a uh, combat phase, I guess is the, is the way to put it. So in the drafting phase, you're gonna move around, move along this tea party. And each character has uh, a special ability. I think all of them, some of them have to do with the tea party and some of them have to do with the combat. So in this case, like I'll just give an example. Ellis moves opposite of everyone else. So they, she gets to draft from this side of the table. Uh, the Mad Hatter has an ability where you can draft a card from anywhere on the table uh, once per draft without moving. So basically you'll move around the table and you'll draft cards. Uh, most characters can get four cards. The Mad Hatter has a asymmetric ability to be able to get five cards per draft. Um, each card, uh, again, the cards have changed. They've, I think they went to like mini cards, but they have a number on here. This is how many meeples you're going to be able to place in a region. And these meeples are essentially the, uh, you'll remove them as you pull out madness tokens. And when you get to zero, you bust just like, uh, quacks or, or any other game and i'll talk about some of the things i like about the way they do the busting in this game um if you decide to go all the way around you end up having to roll a uh sorry i think i don't remember if you roll the dice or you just take a crystal but you basically take a negative point crystal and then that you can get rid of and then you refresh the uh table and it has two effects is that you get to refresh all the taken cards and you get to delay your choice. So there can be a lot of strategy about going around the table. And each of these is base, is a icon. Some of them give you chips that you get. Some give you like a Wonderland creature. Some give you upgrades for your abilities and chips. I mean, it, they're all like uh, a varying variety. And I think that they balance, I'm not sure exactly, but they, I think they balance the power of what you get versus how many meeples you put out. So you have to balance those things too. And the draft is, I think, really well done. Um, so let's go back here, if I can, to... Uh, okay, this is probably the closest I can show you of a player board. So in this case, Mad Hatter, you're gonna have, on the left here, you're gonna have abilities that you can unlock. 
And on the right, you're going to have places you can forge chips that you pull out uh, using forge tokens to essentially build your uh, uh, thing. And you can also, that lets you take the chips out of your, uh, out of your bag. And then up here is your madness track, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So while we're looking at this, let me just put, I'll just leave this up for a little bit while I talk about uh, the combat phase and then what I liked and disliked about the game or hope they improve before, before it comes out. So in the combat, uh, you're going to be vying for control of various regions. Each region, you can get points for winning the battle, you can get points for fulfilling quests in that region, and you can get points for uh, controlling the region with a, with a castle, with your castle. So to control a region, different people can put whatever meeples they want into a certain region. So if you want to have a better shot of controlling it, you obviously put more meeples. When you pull out these madness tokens, they'll have a certain number of, uh, I don't know if it's like broken teacups. I don't know, it's some like symbol on it, but they can either have one or two. And for how many ever symbols there are, you have to remove that many meeples from, from the board. If you run out of meeples, you uh, uh, are essentially out. And you'll do this draft simultaneously. So everyone's going to pull out one or nothing show their hand and then that's how you signify that you're ending just like quack style like if you're playing uh the final round of quacks so um so basically that that's how it works you'll do that until you decide to stop and you might stop for a variety of reasons maybe it's because you stopping now lets you complete your quest or maybe you stop because you're worried you're gonna bust uh etc if you bust your your uh essentially your strength in that region goes to zero um, and then I'll talk about some, some, uh, mechanics they have around busting that I think other games should consider. So let me first talk about, uh, the things I liked most about this game. I think that the drafting over here in the tea party was really well done. I think, uh, uh, not having a currency in this game, not having to buy stuff for your bag, having a competitive draft is a really good way of doing it. I think it, it works really well. It It's interesting. You know, you have the option to refresh it if you want by paying, essentially paying victory points. And I think it's, it's just a, a really cool mechanic. And it works with the theme because you're going around this tea party kind of, uh, I think you've seen in like movies or, or whatever. I think the artwork and the minis are really well done. This is not the artwork that you'll see in the final, uh, the final production. Uh, this... I believe is close to final let's see yeah you can kind of see it in the yeah this is the artwork i think it's really well done the minis look really good i mean this is uh uh an amazing production i think uh uh for this game i think the gameplay is pretty quick i don't recall i think it took us like 45 minutes to play a four player game through maybe like a third for the first time so I could see this game taking maybe like an hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes for players that know what they're doing. Um, but because a lot of the play is simultaneous or it's pretty quick, you're pretty much feeling engaged most of the time, which is, which is great. I like the fact that each character has special abilities. So each character's abilities over here are going to be different. Um, I do think that's going to pose a challenge for the designers. Uh, building a good asymmetric game is very difficult and one that's fairly balanced so they'll have to pay attention to that um i also like that the the abilities are thematic like mad hatter has teacups and you you can do more with your teacups you also have an ability where you're it's you know it's your tea party so you can do something at the tea party etc so i think it's cool the way they they tied the theme in with the characters and you know, I could see if the game's successful, they, they'll add more Wonderland characters to it, and I think that'll be cool. Um, so, I also like how the area control is done with meeples in various areas, and you can choose to place more, or choose to take, you know, basically drafting your cards and placing more meeples, and you can choose which area you want to place them, when you place them, during the draft, so that you kind of have a lot of control over where you're more and less likely to bust. You also know which order you're going to do the battles in. So you could, uh, 
you could plan for that too. I think there's a lot of strategic things with where you put your meeples, what tokens you buy. I think there's it, it's an amazing option with that. I think that this could be. Um, I, I mean, I think this game this game uh, has the potential to be one of the better games this year if it's done right. Just just from these just from a mechanical perspective. Um, so I like the idea that you bust only when you're on meeples. So. You know, it's not even the game telling you, like, in Quacks, it's seven explodey uh, cherry bomb uh, things or, or whatever it is. Here, it could be, you might not even be in a battle, and the next battle, you could have, like, seven chances, seven, like, madness tokens. So, I think that, uh, you know, you have a lot of control over, kind of, your push-the-luck mechanism in, in this. Um and then finally, I really like this uh, madness token. So what happens is when you take a madness token out, um, uh, you will add them to this track. And once you have like four madness tokens, you actually put everything back in your bag that you took out. So, but not until. Um, so it's a unique thing where instead of it being like a deck that you're shuffling, you are building a bag and you only reshuffle when a certain number of these like uh, reshuffle cards come out. So the more you uh, pull these mana tokens, the more likely you are to put everything back in. The other, the, the, uh, I guess the other thing I liked about the, I guess, busting mechanic. When you do bust, there is this shield token. So say you bust and the shield tokens flip to this side. If you... Um, if you flip it, you can put it back in the bag and then either redraw a token or redraw nothing and you can stop. So as long as you have the shield, you're safe. Now if the shield is gone and then you bust, you actually get the shield back and just automatically. So I think it's a really good way of doing busting and I think it leads to some unique strategies where maybe this battle isn't that important for you. You're just going to go and try and tr really try to win and and uh risk it and without a shield knowing that for the next battle that's more important you're going to get your shield back if you do bust or you might you might win it, it i think it leads to another strategic layer in in uh i think an already interesting game um finally there's one more point i want to make about uh positives here the Oh, the way the chips are done. So this, this is a pre-production copy. These are plastic chips. I think they're planning for something like that in the Kickstarter, which I think is good. Uh, bag building game with plastic chips. A lot of people like them. I know Quacks had problems with just uh, punch out tokens. These look really good. They said there might be options to either buy or uh, stretch goal for better tokens than like these pla than plastic ones. I think that would be amazing. I think if you're going to upgrade one more thing in this game, should be the plastic tokens because maybe it's something better i think it'd be amazing i think people i think people would pay more for a deluxe version of this if it had like clay tokens or like weighted poker chips or something like i, th I think people would uh, uh really really like that so let me talk about uh kind of the neutral items next so things i'm could go either way on and it may depend on how they finish the design so this game you know is not finalized there's they're changing stuff so the version i played might even be different by the time it goes to kickstarter so some some of these characters are wonderland characters that come out um that you can recruit and like i think this is the caterpillar the rabbit uh i don't know who i can't see who that is the humpty dumpty uh i don't maybe like king i don't know but different wonderland characters you can recruit into your like army um each of them have special abilities i'm not sure that these special abilities are balanced and since that since you draft the cards and a certain number are available that round you could get one really good one and two terrible ones so i think that they might need to improve the balancing of the wonderland characters the second thing i i thought should be improved is when you draft so if three wonderland cards come out let's go back over here so these are wonderland draft cards so in this case i think two came out 
on this circle, you just put two cards out for options for one line characters. I really think that should be two or whatever number plus one. I think that gives you a little bit more opportunity for an option with the uh, more options with the one line characters. Just a just a thought. So I would say uh, so now we've done with the neutral stuff. I'll talk about the negative points. There's really only one that I see so far. Now, of course, with more plays, I might there might be more. I think the you know as I mentioned before, the balance can be a tricky issue. I, I doubt all the powers are balanced today. Maybe they are, but you know uh, uh, they just have to play test it thoroughly to to get that. But I do think quests are very swingy. So I know we only played a partial game, but just looking at the quests, you could see that some were. I think had a potential for a lot more points than other ones and if you in the first rounds you're just going to draw or the first round you're just going to draw random quests if you choose to take a quest and if you get a quest that's really good to complete worth a lot of points that's great you could end up with a quest that is terrible and not something you're going to be able to go after in the three in the in the game so i think they need to think about how the quest mechanic is done maybe so that i don't know maybe have a drafting of quests i uh they, they i think they tried that and it didn't it didn't uh work balance wise but maybe there's some other options maybe something i haven't considered uh uh for this so i just think that the quest mechanic needs to be looked at a little bit closely because i think that it could swing the game's uh balance in one way or the other and could actually detract from it um which uh, I'm, I'm really excited for this game after playing it. So um, so there you have it. That is my first look at Wonderland's War. With uh, uh, I, I still can't remember his name. He's, he's at the convention every year working for Skybound. But uh, uh, I hope you like this video. And please, uh, please take a look at our other videos. And, and please subscribe. Thank you.